This is High Adventure. Stories that have all three. Danger, escape, suspense. And here is the man of High Adventure, George Sanders. adventure, and you have already been forewarned that I am George Sanders. Not that the possession of such an overwhelming bit of information may be of any consequence to you. However, I might say that my maternal guardian was somewhat overjoyed at the idea. Uh, my father, on the other hand, assumed a rather negative position about the business of my being George Sanders. I must confess that I've never been able to determine exactly why. Be that as it may... I'm sure you're wondering in just what way the foregoing facts relate themselves to high adventure. The answer is simple. I came alive, as did you. And so we all possess that spark we call living. When that spark is intensified into a brilliant flame by a moment of sheer adventure, we term that moment high adventure. Shall I illustrate? The tale is one of a man married to a beautiful woman, a woman who succumbed to a touch of the Orient. You're listening to George Sanders tell you of the bottom of the hill, another transcribed story of high adventure. It sometimes seems that everybody is in a hurry. People dash from one place to another as though their lives depended on a fast arrival. Well, now, actually, their lives do depend on their speed because if a pedestrian moves too fast at the wrong time, he or she may have no arrival. How many times, for instance, have you seen a pedestrian start to cross the street? He steps off the curb, proceeds just a few steps, and the traffic light changes. Instead of turning back to the safety of the sidewalk, he goes merrily across the street, ignoring the traffic that has started to move. Cars which are already in motion must come to a sudden halt to avoid hitting a careless pedestrian. Pedestrians who dash out in the street against the light are courting an accident. So when you're a pedestrian, be careful. Cross streets at the intersection and wait until a traffic light or the police officer tells you it's all right to cross. Keep your thinking cap on when you're crossing the street. This message is brought to you as a public service. A high adventure story. This one is called Bottom of the Hill. And it is a story about two people, Henry Hunter and his lovely wife, Carol. But in one sense, it is more than a story of two humans. It's a story about a place, Borneo. Henry Hunter, you are a very successful businessman, and like most aggressive men of your type, you take only the best. So it was even with marriage. You'd take only the most vivacious creature you could find. Carol was all of that and more. You love her deeply, and she returns that love even more ardently. Your business, Henry Hunter, takes you to the four corners of the earth, and these trips have meant separations. They've spelt loneliness for both you and Carol. So you made a decision of the heart, never to leave this lovely treasure of yours behind again. Unfortunately for you, a decision of the heart is seldom a good one. Come in. Ma'am, oh, Janet, Mr. Hunter and I are going abroad. Yes, I know, ma'am. I'll be closing up the apartment. Oh, when I come back, Janet, I won't need your services. Please, ma'am. I'm sorry, Janet. I'm sure you understand. That's all. Very well, ma'am. You were a little hard, I thought, Carol. I don't think I was, Henry. Oh, I think you did quite right, only... Henry Janet's simply not a nice girl. She has a date with a different man every night. Well, after what we found out, naturally, she had to go. I'm sure she'll find another position. Carol. Yes, dear? You know you're very beautiful. Why, how nice, Henry. So righteous and so beautiful. Dreadful, devastating combination. Oh, I didn't know I was righteous. Sure, it's oh, How droll, darling. A little island of virtue and an ocean of sin. Oh, don't be silly, Henry. Talking about oceans, this time next week we'll be flying across the Pacific. Are you sure you want me to go with you? Absolutely. I'm really looking forward to it, of course. You'll be the loveliest thing that ever landed in Sarawak. Oh, this after eight years of marriage. <laughs> What sort of a place is it, darling? Many sorts. It's Borneo, after all. It's fairly civilized around the coast. According to what standards? (laughs) South China Sea standards, I'm afraid. Sounds wild. Oh, we'll be staying in a good hotel. I'm glad to hear that. It stands on top of a hill. 
overlooks the town below. How delightful. You can see the slums. But we won't go slumming, I'm afraid. Slumming doesn't appeal to me. The town at the bottom of the hill is, uh, well, uh... Off limits to nice people? Call it that. Well, apart from places like that, is Sarawak a nice country? Land of the blood-red dak tree. Red, yellow, and purple jungle. Rich plantations. Ah, and we should be seeing it in just, uh, seven minutes and thirty seconds. Have a look through the porthole. Yes. I see land. Funny. What is it, darling? Same feeling I always get when I come here. Feeling? <laughs> desire to get away from the place. Perhaps it was a desire to get home. To you. <laughs> I have the same feeling now, and you're you're with me. You probably need your martini. I'm getting one as soon as we get to the hotel. <laughs> balcony. Enjoying the view? Yes. That sunset. Quite a picture. Beautiful. It'll be dark in a few minutes. So quickly. After a while, the moon will come up. In the night? Mm, yeah. Is that the place you told me about? Oh, down there. The foot of the hill, yeah. Looks mysterious. A dusk hides a multitude of sins and a cloak of mystery. Well, you rest for an hour. All right. Griff Stevens is waiting for me downstairs. We'll get our business settled. Then plan something for the evening. All right, Henry. Nobody eats dinner till about nine o'clock here. Plenty of time for us to dress. It's so hot. Hot? Suffocating. It's really quite cool up here. Of course it is. I, I'm all right. Are you sure? Yes, it came over me for just a moment. I'm perfectly all right now. Well, I'll be down in the bar if you need me. Back inside of an hour anyway. Where's my wife? We are making inquiry, sir. Where is she? Uh, please, a little patience, Mr. Hunter. She can't have just vanished. Well, I'm sure she is somewhere in the hotel, sir. Excuse me, sir. Hello. Impossible. But thank you. She was seen leaving the hotel about an hour ago. Leaving the hotel? Well, she took a rickshaw. What? She was down the hill. Down the hill? The rickshaw boy took her to a place called Melick. All right, now. No, no, no. What is the, this Melick, sir? A curio shop? Well, hardly that, sir. It's run by a man named Chandra Millick. He has an evil reputation. I would suggest the police, Mr. Hunter. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes? Mr. Malik? Mr. Malik is a man of infinitely large proportions, weighing some 300 pounds. He's reputed to be immensely strong. Would you say I measure up to that description? Now look, obviously, you think I do. Can we dispense with the games? My name is Hunter. Ah, you come rushing into my establishment, proclaiming your name as Hunter. What can I do for you, Mr. Hunter? My wife came here. Did she? A rickshaw boy brought her. Ah. She was here less than an hour ago. She was? Where is she? You don't rule this part of the world, you know. And you're in my establishment. Do sit down, my dear fellow. I'd rather stand. As you please. At least smoke one of my cigarettes. Thanks, no. They're excellent. I want to know where my wife is. Yeah, you're worried about her. Yes, slightly. Do let me pour you a drink. Where is she? Let me pour you a drink. I, I don't want it. I insist. You see, I hate talking to anyone unless they drink with me. Here. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll drink with you. Why not sit down, too? Look. Suppose I call the police. Police? I will, in, a, in about two minutes. Why do people like you always use the word police as a threat? The police are ordinary people like you, like me. Where's my wife? You feeling ill? No air in this place. Really? Where is she? Beautiful creature, Mr. Hunter. When she first came here, it was though she melted out of the oriental night. I'll go for the police. We were talking about your wife, an unusually refreshing woman for this part of the globe. <laughs> my wife. Where, where is my wife? She was where there, she? of course. Where is she? A moment, and then the ecstasy of her loveliness was gone. That drink, that drink you gave me. She was like a butterfly, having paused in its flight for a moment. I kill you. <laughs> Some 
Someone has said that a woman's place is in the home. I quite agree. But woe to the man who tries to keep one there. A woman must be a butterfly and flit about. Flit, flit, flit. And when they're not flittering, they're fluttering. And between the flit and the flut, romance. Whatever that's supposed to be. I must confess I feel little compassion for Mr. Henry Hunter. Oh, well, we have a beautiful female on the loose in a strange part of the Orient. A devoted husband who has met with sudden violence. And so, uh, we have the beginning of another high adventure. When you set out to buy something new, like as not, you go to the store with the largest selection and the greatest variety. And by the same token, when you're shopping around for a good mystery, it pays to stay tuned to Mutual with its wide selection for all fans. Among the many packages of top mystery entertainment, you'll find some labeled suspense, some favorite fiction sleuth, some adventure, some factual. For instance, if you like stories featuring a famous detective, there are The Falcon and Mickey Spillane Mystery with Mike Hammer. For a mystery that's definitely different, you might try Squad Room and a realistic glimpse inside police precinct headquarters. Or Nightmare with a master of chills, Peter Lorre. Or follow David Harding, Counter Spy. And for those who prefer mystery of the documentary type, there are Under Arrest, Crime Fighters, and Official Detective. Dial Mutual for a mystery throughout the week. You can hear them all over most of these mutual stations. High Adventure. You know, Henry Hunter, for a man of your intelligence, you're acting like a boob. I would assume you had the good sense to realize that chasing a wife is rather an outmoded form of endeavor, don't you think? Let them run if they will. And believe me, they will. So, Henry Hunter, you went to the bottom of the hill in search of your lovely wife. You are a strong and vigorous person. A man who is not used to being denied. But, Henry, you are not a match for sinister violence. And you find yourself on the hard floor, your senses reeling. Oh. It was necessary to subdue you, Mr. Hunter. My head. The feeling will pass. I must find her. Oh, I could help you. What? As a matter of fact, I'm interested in knowing what became of your wife. What became of... You seem shocked by all this. I can't believe it. You could believe it if it applied to another woman. Not a woman like Carol. <laughs> You're a very naive man, my dear fellow. Why did she come here? To compose yourself, Mr. Hunter. Take this. What is it? An address, number 14 Soho Hanana Street. Street of the pure white lily. I'm told that's where your wife went. I don't believe it. Let me know if you find her. If you don't, come back. She might return here. Open this door. Open it. Yes? I'm looking for my wife. Your wife? I was told she came here. You may come in. Is she here? Please to come in. All right. Please. All right, I... I'll follow you. This is my room. Please come in. I can't see anything. Your eyes will grow accustomed in a moment. <laughs> Here's a couch. Now be comfortable. Was she here? Your wife? An American lady. The beautiful, pretty lady. Yes. She was here. I'm going crazy looking for her. Hush. S since, since 8 o'clock she's been gone. It is early yet. Sit down. No, no, I... One comes here for peace, contentment. Sit down. Can't think straight. Was so gentle. Where is she? Do not tremble so. Well, where did she go? I do not know where she went. You must have some idea. Must you worry about her? She's my wife. Get out. I don't want you here. Get out. You saw her. She was here. Where did she go? Find her. Go ahead, find her. Now get out. Get out. Sorry, I... I must be going crazy. I... Get out! <laughs> oh, <laughs> you. Taking my evening stroll. Where am I going to look for her? Oh, any one of a hundred places in this neighborhood. I'll go for the police. I should have done that to start with. Will the police know where to look? I don't know. She was at this address, though? Yes. 
Uh, let me suggest a couple of places. I may even walk with you to them. Shall we take a stroll, Mr. Hunter? All right. Phil, she wouldn't have come down here. You didn't think she'd run off? All right, all right. Has it occurred to you the sudden change of environment might have transformed her? What? You flew here from your frigid North American climate to this rather beautiful trop? Nothing of the sort. Oh, but I think you're wrong, Mr. Hunter. All right, I'm listening. Surely you must have felt something of the same sort during your previous visits here? No. A compelling impulse to turn your back on everything in your everyday life? No. You simply abandon yourself, the world around Shut you. Shut up! You evidently overcame these impulses, but some of us can't. I forsook my place in society, Mr. Hunter, to remain here. You'll find many like me. Men and women. Not Carol. Not her. (laughs) Where are we going? To what is erroneously called the Chinese section. Good evening, uh, Mr. Malik. Uh, good evening, Shan. Uh, so nice of you to uh, bring a friend. This is Mr. Hunter. Oh, uh, Mr. Hunter? Mr. Hunter's disturbed over his wife. Ah? Uh? We've been looking for her. Your doorman said an American lady came here this evening. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Is she here now? Oh, uh, perhaps. <laughs> is that her? Oh, so sorry, no. Please uh, uh, follow me. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Hunter. Despite the oriental gloom, despite the whispers and the silence, no one will put a knife in your back. In here, please. An empty room. Uh, please, uh, I'll be seated. Sure. Uh, now, excuse me, uh, if you please. Uh, now, now what? <laughs> Tell me something. Yes? Why are you spending all this time with me? Curiosity, shall we say? Is that all? It could be. No, she wouldn't come to a place like this. Are you so sure? I'm sure, yes. Oh, don't shout in this place, Mr. Hunter. Carol! Carol, are you here? Carol! Really, Mr. Hunter? Carol! She wouldn't come here. Listen. Don't go out there. It's her. Her footsteps. Carol! I told you not to go out. Let go of me. Let go. Carol! Carol! It was her. It was her. You only saw the silhouette, Mr. Hunter, not the woman. Let go of me. We had expected to wait here patiently. While my wife gets away. (laughs) Wait! Carol! Carol! Carol, where are you? Carol! 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 Yes? Honey, I... What do you want? Oh, well, Carol, it's... It's me. Yes, I know. Where have you been? What are you doing? Don't touch me. Carol, I'm a half out of my head. I can't stand any more of this. Please, go away. Go... Go away. Go away, please. Carol... Carol, the way you look at me is as if you don't know me. I know you. What is it, honey? What what happened to you? Please, leave me. Let's go home. Carol, let's go home. Leave me alone. I don't want you with me. Leave me alone. Don't follow me. Poor Henry Hunter. Hunter. <laughs> Rather aptly named, isn't he? I wonder what exactly is wrong with the young woman. When they begin to act the way she's acting, I'm at a total loss to discover the cause. Of course, when it comes to the female of the species, most of us men are lost. Some few of us manage to struggle free, but we are never quite the same. None of us. And yet, the rather odd fact of the matter is we enjoy it. I use the word we loosely. I prefer not to include myself. Of late, I've been toying with the idea of severing myself from the outside world, becoming a hermit. At any rate, Carol's strange behavior and Henry's almost fruitless search go to make up the kind of story that can only be called high adventure. One of the easiest ways to send gifts abroad is through CARE. CARE has a variety of packages for shipment overseas for either your friends or relatives or just because you want to help someone. There's a food package that is designed to meet specific needs. The contents are chosen to combine with available foods to make nationally preferred dishes. CARE also has self-help packages. These parcels provide people in Europe and Asia with the tools to help themselves. One of these is the Special Plow Package, which is delivered to India, Pakistan, and Greece. It provides an easily assembled, simple farm implement. When used by small holding farmers, it can bring about a crop increase of as much as 40%. CARE has an English language instruction package, too. 
It includes not only instruction manuals designed for the foreign student, but a half dozen volumes of basic literature. For further information about care packages, contact your local care office. This message is brought to you as a public service. High adventure and a rather unusual conclusion to Bottom of the Hill. So, Henry Hunter, you find yourself at a loss to know just what to do. You are unable to break through Carol's mood. Yet you're convinced that it is some kind of strange mood, some sort of hypnotic trance. Your experience tells you of the influence of the Orient with its strange ways and its different standards. And also, you are very much aware of the powers of evil, the fatal fascinations of the lovely flowers and the beautiful dreams. Yet you cannot believe it is true. Perhaps you are in a dream. She knew you, but she told you to go away. But you won't. You keep on following. What audacity you had, Mr. Hunter. She came back here to your place. Oh, why don't you give up? I followed her. She came here. You're very lucky. You see, I've had to reconsider my decision to kill you. What? The authorities are looking for you. They know you came here. Authorities? But you had your nerve coming here. I found her. Where did it get you? It was like she was hypnotized. You'd prefer to think that, I suppose. But she knew me. A wife should know her husband. She walked away. <laughs> I called after her, but she didn't even turn around. She just walked away. Don't you see? You no longer interested. I don't know what to do. Go back to America. You're crazy. You know I'm not? If I had a gun. Oh, no, come. This was the first place she came to. And the last one? That's right. She's here. But she's lost to you. She's sick. Something's happened to her. She merely ceased to exist for you and for all the other things she's known all her life. She rebelled. She took another road. It's very easy to understand. Where is she? If I don't tell you, you'll run for the police, I suppose. You bet I will. Call it the tropics, Mr. Hunter. It happens to men. Why not to a woman? What? You came to this country with a wife. You leave without her. Let it go at that. <laughs> That's a good one, huh? Depends on your point of view. Just leave her here. Of course. And let it go at that. Have you a choice after all? There's something I have a choice about. Violence? That's it. I wouldn't contemplate anything like that. You wouldn't? Not if I were you. You're not me. One moment. I am tired of this gentlemanly attitude. If you so much as raise my hand, I'll break you into so many pieces, little pieces. I can do it. I've done it so many times. <laughs> I'm falling! Hold me! I'm falling! <laughs> that was quite a weight to carry downstairs. Uh, uh, uh. You really took a fall, didn't you? You're the doctor. He wants a doctor. Why didn't somebody get him one? Doctor, quick. What's a broken back to you or a few broken ribs? Get me a doctor. You fool. Carol. Oh, hello, darling. I was afraid you'd miss the plane. What are Did you... Did you buy a magazine? Magazine? Oh, I so hoped you would. Oh, no. I suppose I... I should have thought of it myself, only you generally attend to those sort of things. I, uh... I've got a newspaper. Oh, never mind, dear. Carol... Isn't the weather just perfect for flying? Yeah. Oh, I'll be so glad to get home. Henry? What? You're so quiet, darling. Yeah, I guess I am. Aren't you glad we're going home? I... Didn't you tell me you're always glad when you leave this place? I'm always glad, yeah. Oh, what a noose. What? The bother of trying to find a new maid when we get home. Good ones are almost impossible to find nowadays. I certainly won't take Janet back. <laughs> well, I won't, Henry. I just won't tolerate my maid engaging in messy little kitchen romances when she thinks my back is turned. After all, I do run a respectable household. I intend to keep it that way. Bottom.
bottom of the hill, a very strange and unusual story of high adventure. I can't help but wonder how life is going to be for Henry Hunter and for Carol. The poor dear did seem quite normal. Of course, I've never been able to ascertain just what is normal for a woman. No, really, I... <laughs> not attempting to be witty, I'm serious. Women are just not normal. I know because I met a normal woman one time. Quiet, demure, intelligent. Poor girl was devoured by her own kind. Never saw her again. Tragic. She liked nothing better than to spend the evenings at home by the fire stroking her pet boa constrictor. What about next week? I'll tell you about it in just a moment. You can always count on Mutual's Corps of Newsmen to bring you outstanding coverage of the news stories of the moment, whether they're national events, international issues, or currently all-absorbing sports news. Every weekday evening, you can enjoy the dramatic and colorful delivery of Gabriel Heater as he presents his views of the day's happening. Then there's Bill Henry with his famed capsule report, five minutes of information-packed listening. For more detailed analysis, you can enjoy the stimulating commentary of Frank Edwards known for his fearless approach on controversial questions. Weekends bring you Jack Brickhouse and his sports news every Saturday, and Cecil Brown every Sunday gives you his comments on the news picture as seen from a veteran reporter's viewpoint. When you stay tuned to Mutual, you're listening to your network for news. Hear Gabriel Heater, Bill Henry, and Frank Edwards every weeknight, Jack Brickhouse every Saturday, and Cecil Brown every Sunday, all over most of these stations. High Adventure, a meeting place for those of us who aren't satisfied with things the way they are. A place for unruly souls to get together. Those who are bored with the usual, the getting up and going to work and the coming home and going to bed, the stifling humdrum of plain existence. So these dissatisfied mortals collect themselves each week at this time to escape, if just for 30 minutes, escape into living. Next week on our High Adventure agenda, we have a story a tale about a young man who liked to take pictures and who suddenly decided that there are a lot of things that can be had just for the taking. This is George Sanders extending to you a cordial invitation to be with us next week for another meeting of our High Adventure Society. Our story, focused on fortune, on High Adventure. Featured on High Adventure with George Sanders this week were Jim Bowles, Connie Lemke, Charlie Holmes, Inga Adams, and Joe Helgeson. Remember, it's focused on fortune. Next week on High Adventure. This program came to you transcribed from New York. <laughs>